Key Change is an international movement for gender equality. Um, it's been funded by Creative Europe twice, so once in 2017 um, for a small scale project and once in 2019 for a large scale project. Currently, we're a partnership of 13, um, 13 festivals and partner organizations ac across 12 countries. Um, so that's in Europe and Canada. Um, and we are a network of organizations that are working to make change in the music industry. So we're fighting to make progress for gender equality, both on, a, on an individual level. So we're working with 74 participants every year. So that's 74 women and gender minority artists and innovators from all across Europe and Canada um, who um, collaborate, showcase, um, travel, um, work together on panels and um, collaborate on creative projects. Um, we support them with training and mentoring and travel bursaries. Um, and then we also have a key change pledge. So. Um, we're making change on that individual level with the participants and then on an organizational level with um, our pledge signatories who have all committed to achieving 50% representation of women and gender minorities in an area of their work um, by 2022. So it's focused on kind of changing the um, sexist nature of the music industry, um, both systemically, um, but also empowering the awesome individual talent that we have across Europe um, and in the UK um, to be that change. We have really brought the music industry together to start taking those steps towards um, an equal future in the music industry. Um, and that's all thanks to Creative Europe funding. The, the reach for our press campaigns has been really, really, um, astonishing to be honest um, because we because of our international collaboration it has really had a global reach um, and that's meant that the conversation around gender equality has really cut through to the mainstream um, and that has been really significant for PRS Foundation in the UK because our profile has been ra um, raised um, really significantly the international collaboration that we've um, that we've kind of been part of and had to kind of work towards to succeed in this project, I think have taken us to um, new relationships, um, new ways of working, um, new ways of knowledge sharing. So we're much closer, um, even in COVID times to our international colleagues and we can, um, I think progress and work towards um, meaningful sustainability um, in a more um, kind of nuanced way because of that. I always love it when you find out a success story, like you find out that someone has got a new job as a result of key change. Um, for example, Harriet Moss, who was a UK participant, got promoted to MD of Manners McDade, which is a publishing company. And yeah, you see people kind of really moving to those top levels, which is always awesome. We've seen um, UK Key Change participant Violet Skies get nominated for a Denise Pop Award. Um, she's also, um, thanks to the Innovation Fund in phase one of Key Change, developed um, a songwriting camp and has since um, gone on to work with Diana Ross in a writing camp. There's that kind of individual success where so many, um, so many amazing um, steps have been taken in the music industry because of the direct support of Key Change. Um, and so, so much music has been made, I think is key because of Key Change. So collaborations have happened. Um, yeah, awards have been, <laughs> awards have been won. Um, and albums have been made, which I think is the most important thing. We are changing the way that organisations think about hiring, the way that organisations think about programming. We're kind of pushing for um, long lasting change to happen so that women and gender minorities exist everywhere in the music industry, from internships to the boardroom. And so we, we now have over 350 organisations who have signed up to our pledge to make that change and that continues to grow. So we are um, continuing to see more and more organizations consciously program women and gender minorities 
um, across the, across the board in the music industry. So I think, although that's organisational change, that has an immense impact on the workforce of the music industry now and in the future. Those women and gender minorities who are being encouraged to continue um, are also empowering. So we'll start to see that affect future generations and hopefully um, we'll see that change start to kind of solidify and um, kind of spread. In Stockholm in February, we launched um, the first cohort of phase two. So all 74 women and gender minority participants met in Stockholm just before COVID hit. Um, and we kind of had this amazing moment of um, kind of openness and collaboration and uh, a couple of days of panels and everyone getting to know each other. Um, and I mean, at the time it felt special, but I think we didn't know quite how special it was in the context of 2020. Um, until then we, we met again and again and have moved everything online and keep going back to this moment in Stockholm in February where actually it was kind of a beautiful safe space for everyone to come together for the first time from 13 different countries who suddenly feel like they're not alone and have this amazing network of people behind them to support them and to work with and bounce ideas off. We are sure that we can support our network and our festivals that we work with um, to, um, to come back next year um, and the year after and the year after that um, with, um, with awesome programs and innovative models um, that um, kind of ensure that the music industry um, is, a, is a supportive structure um, that places value in the right places. I feel like we're in a very good place um, to um, go into 2021 um, with um, gender equality um, still on the table um, and at the forefront of um, what sustainability should be um, for, for music festivals and all organisations in the music industry.